Okay, I actually am not so sure if I filmed this video, but if I didn't, this is a different video. Um, so this one's actually why you should work in tech. And this is gonna be interesting because I'm gonna be doing another video right after this on why you shouldn't work in tech, which honestly has a lot more juicy details. Like I think a lot of people wanna work in tech, they don't need to be convinced to work in tech, but just so you know what you're getting into, watch this video. All right, first one's flexibility. I think a lot of people know about like, ooh, you get unlimited PTO, or like, ooh, you get to work from home, or you get to work around the world. Like tech generally has that kind of atmosphere where you're tech focused or tech first, so you can do all those above. Honestly, I'm not even gonna go too much about it, flexibility. This also could mean like work-life balance could be better or like the flexible work arrangements could be better. And this actually also leads to the next one, which is benefits. When it comes to tech companies, you can have a lot of good health benefits and also PTO benefits. I will be careful about unlimited PTO. There's like a little catch on that. And when it comes to benefits, I would say like, the good thing is that if you're in a big company, you tend to have a lot of good benefits. The bad thing is that if you're in a startup or a small company, small tech company, they may not have a lot of this set up. That's the thing It's like, but what I would say is that you'll still have usually, usually, better benefits than if you were in an adjacent industry like retail. Like working at a like a boutique in Soho versus in a small tech startup, you're probably gonna have better benefits regardless. And when I say like a tech startup, you may have cooler benefits too versus like a small hospital or small practice. Just like those are just like things I'm saying because a lot of times when it comes to tech, you honestly don't need to be strapped down to a desk most times, okay? But it does help, you know? And so when it comes to the next one, which is actually fast growth, this is actually the one where it's like a really good and a really bad thing, depending on how you look at it. This will be in the why you shouldn't be in tech as well. Fast growth means that things happen so fast that you don't even realize and this usually means that you're at the forefront of what's going on. It depends on the type of company you're in, of course, but like I would say that over the industries, tech is usually faster than the others because there's just like so many things that can happen, so many innovative things that happen. The industry is just booming. There's just like untapped value in a lot of areas and people just need to find that value and then tap into that potential essentially. So that's what I would say is like fast growth. You get to learn about all these cool things. It's new tech of the industry, depending on the kind of company you're in. So that's what I would say is pretty cool. And there are some caveats to that and definitely check out the video that I'm gonna be releasing next on next Thursday. Compensation. This one's like something that honestly I knew was good, but I just didn't know how. Your base salary can be like meh, depending on the kind of company it is. If it's a small company, it could be meh, to be honest. Um, and then you would also have like your benefits, which technically count, which could be good too, depending on how you value it. And the one that no one talks about if you're going into tech specifically, if you're coming from an area that no one really knows about tech, because honestly, a lot of people I know know tech, but I also come in an urban environment. But even in rural, you probably don't know anything about tech sometimes. I don't want to generalize, but it does happen. You also have all these cool things called stocks. <laughs> Check out my video here on like RSUs, how that works out, equity, and my compensation like package as well. Like I didn't talk about compensation, but I did talk about like how tech salaries work. Check that out. There's also so much content out there. I don't want to like talk about it if there's so many other people that did better job than me. And I don't want to talk to it so much because it's always going to change. There's always going to be some new way of being compensated, to be honest. But I would say equity is a big thing. You get GSUs, which is the Google RSUs, and in this case, restricted stock units or options or none. But I would say those two RSUs and options are huge because you that, that can actually make the difference between someone who does well or someone who does really well. Because I actually live off of my base salary. So in this kind of way, like I, I, I treat it like a salary, but some people treat RSUs as a bonus. And I don't really treat uh, RSUs as a bonus. I kind of treat it as like, almost like a retirement account, you know, like put it over there. I don't need it. And it just kind of sits there. So that's what I would say is like with RSUs, you can sell it and it becomes a bonus. But in this case, there's a lot of other like tax considerations and I will definitely leave it to that video. Then there's also the one where it's like relatively good job security in the private sector. When I say that, I mean relatively to other sectors because tech is always growing. It's just a matter of where you're growing. 
because maybe if one area starts to trend, then this area starts to tank. But then if you like keep in mind of all the current events that's going on, you'll be able to definitely see that. And like I said, actually in the video of like layoffs, you can pivot, slightly pivot or make suggestions that help this particular area grow. So that's what I would say is like relatively good job security because there's always an area that's growing and you can always pivot um, and definitely try to pivot. I would always keep your eyes open, be very open-eyed, open-minded, check it out. And then the other one is ability to break into entrepreneurship. This one's harder to be honest. Like I think if you, let's say we're in retail, you can always start a whole new retail company. My can, in my opinion, it's actually easier to do that because it's like an easy skill. You just need the money to get that started up in the first place. But what I would say in tech specifically, yeah, well, labor is really what you're gonna need and you need to hire software engineers. But at the same time, if you are a software engineer, you can honestly get this started as early as like a weekend or at night. And you can do this on the side. Meanwhile, that spends nothing. You spend like zero dollars at the very beginning. It's kind of like content creation. You only really need your phone and you already have your phone. So generally you're not paying additional money for your phone. And then you can use a lot of free video editing software out there. So honestly, there's a lot of like online things you can do where you're saving money, but at the same time you're generating revenue. Rover Katzing is one of them for me. So I would say for tech specifically, ability to break into entrepreneurship easier, depending on your skill set. You can always find a, a co-founder and boom, you're already done. You can just like, well, that's not, I'm not gonna say that's done, but like you just started the work, but now you gotta work on the work. Um, so honestly, in that case, I would say probably the barriers of entry when it comes to financial reasons are going to be a little bit lower. You do, however, eventually need to hire more people. That's where it gets a little bit difficult, but it's better because there's usually more growth in tech than like retail where there's like tons of people in retail or tons of fashion brands or tons of pr medical practices, all that kind of stuff. Then the other one is like many potential remote roles. This is actually really cool because I think when it comes to tech, tech is like very well positioned for that. You don't actually need a specific space to be in to do that because there's a lot of roles out there that are remote or it's probably better to be in person for brainstorming kind of ways. Like let's say for example, you're brand new, you're trying to come up with a brand new product. It's hard to do a whiteboard remotely. I've tried, it's hard, but you can always do that as like, I'll do my own thing on the side and then I'll go and fly in there just for that. So you're kind of saving money on rent altogether if you're just going to go to somewhere that's low cost or lower cost and then you're just going to go when you need to. Um, but that's what I would say is like actually really easy is that there's a lot of options. That's the video on why you should work in tech. Honestly, there's so many more. Let me know down below what you think. And also let me know what you think sh is not a good reason to work and you want to stick along for that one because that one's more juicy. There's more tea. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.